Jeff Brom's first full weekend as the head coach of the University of Louisville, and he picked up two commitments from local high school standouts. On today's episode of the Locked On the Louisville podcast, we're going to talk about those commitments, two local transfers that would make sense for the Cardinals, and the Cardinals volleyball team making it back to the Final Four. With that being said, let's get right on into the show. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On the Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. As always, I want to say thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, the Locked On the Louisville podcast is free on all streaming services five days a week. Your team every day. Over the weekend, the Louisville Cardinals picked up two Flyville 23 commitments from local defensive stars, a St. X defensive lineman, Micah Carter, and Henderson County defensive lineman Sadiq Clements. We'll also talk about uh, two transfers, Aiden Robbins and Stephen Heron, that would make sense for the Cardinals next season. And then to conclude the show, we'll talk about the Louisville volleyball team making it back to the Final Four. We'll start out with Flyville 23. One of the pros of hiring Jeff Brom for Louisville was vastly improving local recruiting. And... You know, obviously, until that gets proven, it's just a sentiment, right? Um, You know, like saying that a coach is a great recruiter of the state of Florida or California or Georgia or Texas. Until they prove that, it's just words. Now, granted, that's not to reflect any type of uh, concern or doubt that Brom couldn't recruit the state of Kentucky because he has shown at Purdue over the past couple years that that's not the case. But, um, you know, one of the big benefits of hiring Brom was bringing back that local recruiting that just hasn't been there uh, over Bobby 2.0, over Scott Satterfield's tenure, and a lot of Louisville fans welcome that. Well, over the weekend, two Purdue commits and both from the state of Kentucky flipped their commitments and committed to the University of Louisville. Micah Carter was the first one on Saturday afternoon. The first commitment of the Jeff Brom era is from 502 defensive lineman Micah Carter uh, from St. X High School. Um, six foot five, 260 pound defensive lineman that played both as a defensive end and on the interior this season. Was a prospect that could have been a possible Flyville 23 edition under Scott Satterfield, but committed to um, Purdue and Jeff Brom back in the month of June. Held offers from Boston College, Michigan, Arizona State, uh, Georgia Tech, Kentucky, Michigan State, West Virginia, so on and so forth. It actually shows that on 24-7 sports that he doesn't hold an offer from Michigan, but officially visited Michigan back in June after he committed from Purdue. Um, Sadiq Clements, the very next day committed, um, flipped his commitment from Purdue, ranked as the 663rd best player in the country. Uh, For reference, Micah Carter ranked as the 501st best player in the country in the 2023 class. Um, Clements also listed as 6'5", 260 pounds, uh, played for Henderson County, um, was awarded some All-State Kentucky, I think, Defensive High School Player of the Year in some fashion. I think um, there was some publishing company that gave Clements that award. But um, Clements had offers from Florida State, um, Indiana as well, Eastern Kentucky, Kentucky, Michigan, um, so on and so forth. So two very, very interesting defensive line commitments look i have been very vocal over the past couple years i think that depth has been a big issue for the cardinals defensive line now granted they've had guys step up you know des tell jared dawson but after that there's been some depth issues now granted you played in a 3-4 base defense that probably won't be the case upcoming uh, depending on who the defensive coordinator hire is but it seems like 
we'll see more of a 4-3 package next season. So that leaves more opportunity for more interior defensive linemen. Um, but I like these two commitments for Louisville because the interior defensive line was a position that I think needed to just continue to grow depth-wise. Now, there's been rumbles that um, Jermaine Lillet, the Arizona State transfer, uh, got hurt in the Syracuse game, uh, missed the rest of the season. There are some rumblings that he is going to be back for next season. If that is the case, that is huge news for Louisville because that is a starting caliber player. You have Des Tell as well. But you need multiple uh, defensive line prospects, um, especially with no interior defensive linemen committed for this class. So it'll be interesting to see what um, Carter and Clements project as at the next level. Both of them this season played similar roles for their respective teams. They uh, predominantly played uh, on the outside as defensive ends, but shifted inside at times and played on the inside. Uh, 6'5", 250, 260 for both of them. Um, I like that Jeff Brom is going after bigger uh, defensive lineman for the trenches, um, you know, six foot five, 260 pounds is really, really good size. So um, I think that whether or not they project as defensive ends at the next level or if Jeff Brom and the defensive coaching staff view them as interior defensive linemen, regardless, I like that versatility. Um, you know, both of them have extremely um, solid strength, as you see on film. They do a good job of blowing through double teams, a good job of you know getting off the edge. Ultimately, they also have the speed to go with that six foot f- six foot five, um, two hundred sixty pound frame that um, could allow them to play on the outside. You know, with Yaya Diaby, uh, obviously no longer with the team. Um, or no longer with the team after this year, I should say. Ashton Gelati will be a junior. Um, Edge seems like a position that you wouldn't necessarily have as much concern for as you would maybe the interior, but uh, you have two players that could project uh, anywhere on the defensive line, and that's a valuable thing to have, uh, knowing that um, they could succeed you know, at one position or the other. Um, so two solid commitments. Right now, the Cardinals, um, I'm looking at their recruiting class, 14 commitments, 25th in the country um, with the additions of uh, Micah Carter and Sadiq Clements, um, both defensive linemen. There has been talks of Indianapolis native Kendrick Gilbert possibly flipping to the Cardinals. That's going to be one to watch for. Um, As far as more uh, high school prospects, I think – well, I don't think I know what I said last week, and that is the key for Jeff Brom for next season is a mixture of three things, holding the majority of this Flyville 23 class together. Um, it seems like there may be some more deep commitments, but uh, I wouldn't expect it to be the majority of the class, especially with Brom making the trip to California this weekend. And uh, you know, all signs, I understand You know, it, it's a long way till signing day still, nine days or so, which doesn't seem like a long time, but anything can happen in that time frame. Um, you have, you know, the Flyville 23 California players seemingly solid in their commitments. Luke Burgess, Madden Sanker solid in their commitments as well. Raekwon Adkins visited Cincinnati. He will be visiting Louisville this weekend. So if you can keep a majority of these commitments together, that's great. Um, you know, going – Uh, And doing some great things in the transfer portal, getting some immediately eligible players. And then the third thing was flipping some of the Purdue commitments. And they flipped two top five uh, commitments in Purdue's class. So big time, um, you know, flips for the University of Louisville, for Jeff Brom uh, to increase that momentum. A top 25 class with only 14 commitments speaks to the potency of rankings in this class. So hopefully they will finish out strong. Uh, But I want to talk about two local transfers, UNLV running back Aiden Robbins, uh, Stanford edge rusher Stephen Heron. Both, in my opinion, would be great additions for the Cardinals next season. We'll talk about uh, them here in just a second after we talk about our friends 
over at LinkedIn Jobs. Um, as I mentioned, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. You can add the job to your profile in the purple hashtag hiring frame to the profile as well to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates that are qualified that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Once again, that's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Hey, Cardinal fans, thanks again for making Locked On Louisville your first listen. For your second listen, check out Locked On Sports Today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insight only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. So transferring right on along into the transfer portal, but staying in the realm of local recruiting because um, as much as we wanted to see Jeff Brom do well with um, recruiting the high school ranks in the city of Louisville and the surrounding areas, we also wanted to see him try to bring some of these transfers that went elsewhere back to the city. Um, for Aiden Robbins, literally that means back to the program where he transferred from to UNLV and for UNLV this past season, 209 carries for 1,011 yards, nine touchdowns, average just under five yards per carry, uh, into the transfer portal has two years of eligibility remaining, um, it was a player that just kind of got buried down the depth chart at Louisville. Obviously you have, um, Travion Cooley, Jalen Mitchell, Hassan Hall, uh, Tyon Evans getting brought into the program this season. It seemed like if Aiden Robbins was going to see significant playing time, it's it was going to be um, you know somewhere else. Now, granted, this Louisville offense isn't going to be running the ball as much, but the fallacy that I'm seeing people kind of fall victim to is this notion that Jeff Brom doesn't run the football. That's incorrect. Granted, Purdue over the past couple of seasons has thrown the ball more than most teams, top 15 this season, and, and um, you know, passing offense, or I should say um, the – Willingness to pass the football, you know, opting to throw the football, but still it was kind of like 58 to 42. And if you look at some of those plays, a lot of times they're not run plays, but it's getting the running backs, the ball out in the flat and kind of is like an extended run play. So um, granted, you know, this isn't going to be a situation to where if Aiden Roberts wanted to come back to Louisville, he wouldn't probably get 209 carries. Um Obviously, there has to be mutual interest, but I think that this would be a huge addition for Louisville because Reuben Owens is now at Texas A&M. You have two scholarship running backs, Jawar Jordan and Maurice Turner. Both of those guys would be classified as speed running backs. Aiden Robbins brings, um, you know, a power running back to the table um, with his size. You know, six foot three, two hundred and thirty pounds, had a phenomenal season. Excuse me, in the Mountain West Conference. And regardless if he is the, you know, day one starter at Louisville, I think that, you know, Jeff Brom and company probably need to bring multiple running backs into this program for next season because, you know, you have to factor in um, injury possibilities and things of that nature. So ultimately, this is a no brainer for me. Bringing back a guy that started at Louisville, went elsewhere, had a ton of success. I'm all for bringing um, local standouts that, you know, produced elsewhere back to the city. Um, I'm very, very uh, much a fan of local recruiting. Obviously, I would love to see Aiden Robbins uh, over the next two seasons, or if he has a good year next year and he goes pro, I would love to see him um, end his Louisville career on a good note. Uh, that would be a huge storyline. Um, and not to mention, you know, you mentioned the storylines, but on the field, you bring that uh, power that you don't have in the running back room right now. Bringing in a thousand yard rusher from a different school is big time. Now, granted, um, it's easier said than done because you're going to have to convince Robbins to not only split carries, but, um, you know, 
have to focus on an offense that doesn't run the ball as much as Scott Satterfield did. But I still think that, um, you know, this notion that Jeff Brom doesn't get his running backs involved, I, I think it's I think it's false. So I think that that would be a huge addition. Um, Stephen Heron as well. Um, uh, you know, local uh, state champion at Trinity High School, former four-star prospect, top 150 prospect, went to Stanford, was committed to Michigan at one time, decommitted from Michigan, and went to Stanford. Um, he is a grad transfer in the portal, six foot three, two 237 pound defensive end had 18 tackles this past season um actually 37 tackles uh, 18 of those were solo five and a half sacks um enters the portal with 10 sacks total uh two forced fumbles this makes a lot of sense with david shaw stepping down uh stanford seemingly going into a rebuild i would assume that heron has two years of eligibility remaining. I think he redshirted in 2019. I could be wrong. If he did not, he only has one year. But um, with the COVID year, he at least has one year of eligibility remaining. Um, regardless, this would be a huge addition as well because there is a clear need at defensive end. Sure, you have Ashton Gelati that is projected as a starter for next year, the junior from Boca Raton. Um, but you lose Yaya Diaby. And sure, you have you know, guys like Popeye Williams, um, you know, Selah Brown, if Adonijah Green, if he stays committed, you have him. Um, there's some other guys that could possibly, you know, get into the mix at the edge position. But Stephen Heron, a guy who's played um, a ton of snaps at a Power 5 school in the Pac-12, um, has produced at a solid level, solid size, uh, 6'3", 237 pounds. Um, I think that this will be a huge addition now. Granted, getting Heron, you would likely assume that he would be the the starter to be penciled in um, opposite of Ashton Gelati, and for good reason, because I think that would be a very, very solid replacement for Heron. Um, for Robbins, um, I'm not sure what the list of schools is looking like for him. I'm not even sure if Louisville has really expressed much interest. I, I don't know, but I can tell you that Louisville has expressed interest in Heron. Um, they've offered him. There have been rumblings that he could be uh, officially visiting the program this weekend, which would be huge news. Obviously, the vibes coming into his announcement, a lot of people thought he would probably end up at Kentucky, but it seems like a lot of people in, in Louisville circles believe that it could be a battle between Louisville and possibly Notre Dame with Kentucky right there, maybe on the outside looking in. Um, but with the Cardinals in the mix, it shows that, um, you know, they're very, very serious about replacing Yaya Diaby with, um, you know, a veteran presence, a guy that has played a ton of snaps, um, you know, at the defensive end position, a proven player, um, you know, played for Stanford, um, but in granted another local prospect. So huge possibilities here. Uh, we've seen Jeff Brom already. Uh, pay dividends in local recruiting at the high school level across the state of Kentucky. I would now like to see him go into the transfer portal and bring some Louisville natives that went elsewhere back home to end their college careers. Um, and not to mention, not only from that sentiment of the local guys coming home, both of these players would you know, definitely address a need. Louisville needs depth at running back. They also need a power running back, in my opinion, that can um, – you know, bring that different skill set um, opposite of Jawar Jordan and Maurice Turner. And then at the defensive end, look, you have a starting position that could be possibly wide open uh, with Yaya Diaby leaving. And regardless, you would be in the two deep. Uh, and I, I think that that's probably the pitch that Louisville is making to Stephen Heron. But um, both Heron and Robbins from the Louisville area, Robbins, DuPont Manual High School, Heron, um, Trinity High School, I would love to see them in Cardinal Red next season. Um, to conclude the show, however, we're going to talk about the Louisville volleyball team making it back to the Final Four. Uh, before we do that, we're going to talk about our friends over at Simply Safe. At Locked On Louisville, we believe home should be where you and your family feel safest, especially over the holidays. This season, give yourself and your family the gift of peace and protection. With the number one rated home security system, Simply Safe. And right now, Simply Safe is offering locked on Louisville listeners 40% off of a new security system 
Don't put this off, especially uh, with the opportunity of getting 40% off. Um, I have, um, since we have brought Simply Safe onto the Locked On Podcast Network, I have taken up their offer, and it has been a phenomenal addition to my household. Um, the advanced technology has been incredible, uh, controlling my system from my smartphone, uh, viewing crystal clear HD security camera feeds, uh, the wide range of high tech sensors, etc. Simply Safe was named the best home security system of 2022. That's a third year in a row. Don't miss your chance right now to say big on my favorite security system. Get 40% off of any new system at simplysafe.com slash locked on college today. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on college. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Heading into the final segment of the show, the Louisville volleyball team back in the Final Four. Over the past couple weeks, we've been talking about the journey back to the Final Four. Now it is avenging a Final Four loss uh, last season to Wisconsin, trying to get uh, to the championship game on Saturday evening. The Cardinals will play Pittsburgh on Thursday evening, uh, 9.30. They are the uh, second matchup after Texas and San Diego. Um, But to get there, the Cardinals played at the KFC Yum Center. They swept Baylor uh, in three straight sets uh, on, what was that, Thursday? Yeah, Thursday at 2 o'clock, I believe, and um, had to face a red-hot Oregon team in the Elite Eight. The third-seeded Ducks um, played very, very solid. They gave the Cardinals everything that they could handle. Um, At one point, the Cardinals were one point away from facing elimination in the fourth set to break down the action. First set, um, Oregon was hitting the ball extremely well, I believe swinging at a over 300 clip, which is very, very solid. Louisville was able to stay within striking distance and get some clutch points at the end of the first set to go up one. Um, The Cardinals then started out very, very excellent in that second set went up eight to three um Oregon would make it a comeback um thanks in part to a lot of errors uh from Louisville both in the service game and in the attack front um but tied up at one after the second set the third set was a blowout um I think eight zero Oregon run to start the third set um Louisville tried to get it within five I think they did at one point but Oregon just ran away with it you get to the fourth set back and forth Louisville leads 20 to 18 Oregon calls a timeout and rips off a um a five to one run to go up 23 to 21 a timeout from Louisville 23 to 23 battle back and forth it's 24 23 Louisville clutches up, wins the four set 27 to 25, thanks to some very solid defense. Claire Chausset and De Beer rise into the occasion, Amaya Tillman as well. And then in the fifth set, it was all Louisville in front of a crowd of over 8,000 people at the KFC Yum Center on Saturday evening. The Cardinals absolutely demolished Oregon in that fifth set. Um, a huge, huge performance, 15 to 6 in that fifth set. And Louisville. Look, this was a matchup in which the Cardinals didn't really play all that well. Um, they hit a 217 um, attacking percentage. Oregon was at 250, but a lot of that came from uh, swinging uh, negative .09 in the final set. But Louisville, um, only one set swung over um, you know, 30%. It was 28% in the first set, 18% in the second, 0% in the third. 27 in the fourth, and then 35 in the fifth. Um, The Cardinals showed that perseverance is the name of the game. Even though they didn't put forth their best performance, they did what needed to be done. They rose to the occasion, and in the biggest stage, under the brightest lights, Anna DeBeer, Claire Chausse led the Cardinals attack. Obviously, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the other players that had a huge, huge um, role in this. Amaya Tillman was great in the middle. Uh, P.K. Kong uh, was great as well. Elena Scott, um, Alexa Hendricks, Aiden Bartlett, C.C. Rush uh, on the back row. You also had um, Raquel Lathero, who really, really did great as um, not only as a setter, but also solid up at the net. Three blocks, um, had four digs, um, just very, very solid. 
performance from the Cardinals as a whole um, just showed that that tournament experience really, really proved to be, um, you know, coming in handy. Um, not a great performance. And if they play like that on Thursday, it's going to be tough to see a Louisville victory. But obviously, I think that Louisville is going to be ready to play. They play a Pittsburgh team that they have split the series with. Um, one thing that the Panthers have not seen this season is a healthy Anna DeBeer. DeBeer led the Cardinals with 17 kills on uh, Saturday evening against the Ducks. And um, uh, what a very, very solid performance, uh, not only um, you know as a hitter, but also um, you know digs-wise, uh, putting her body on the line. That trainer came out to look at her knee at one point. She stayed in the game. Um, absolutely phenomenal performance from her, Chaucey, Tillman, so on and so forth. Uh, but Pittsburgh in the first match up when they won in five up in Pennsylvania, no Anna DeBeer. When the Cardinals swept Pittsburgh at l and Federal Credit Union Arena at the end of the regular season, Anna DeBeer, I think, only recorded one kill. Didn't play a lot as she was slowly getting brought back into the rotation. Now you have a healthy Anna DeBeer, but still Pittsburgh – very, very solid. This is uh, a team. These are two teams that know each other very well. I fully expect this to be an absolute war on Thursday evening. Um, in I think it's – is it Nebraska is where the final four is? Lincoln, Nebraska? I could be wrong. Um, somewhere in Nebraska. I'm drawing a blank here. Regardless, um, it's – very awesome to be back in the Final Four. Um, the winner of that will take on the winner of San Diego and Texas. San Diego, the only loss on the season, came to the Cardinals earlier in September. Texas, the number one team in the field. So um, an uphill battle for the Cardinals, but I am very confident in Danny Busboom Kelly's team. And um, let's go Cards. But that's going to wrap up uh, today's episode of the show. I do want to take this time um, – to uh, extend our thoughts to Mike Leach, his family and friends, the Mississippi State football program, the um, Mississippi State community, the state of Mississippi, all those that know him and love him. Um, at the time of this recording, it doesn't seem like there's much information at this time other than, um, you know, he's definitely fighting for his life and it's going to take a miracle. Our thoughts and our prayers are extended to those that know Mike, uh, to the community um you know we're all rooting for you coach uh very very much hoping that he can pull this out um but it's times like this that the uh the college football community the uh the nation as a whole needs to come together um and uplift uh the state of mississippi and the mississippi state football program and the university so um some very, very unfortunate news that uh, we extend our thoughts and prayers to. That is going to wrap up this Monday edition of the show. Everyone have a great day. We'll see you right back here very soon.